All right, this is the Play-Doh graph activity. And if you missed how to make a scatter plot, let me show you how to do that. Well, what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to go and click under here where I need to insert a scatter chart. I'm in a Google Doc and I wanna show you how you can insert charts in Google Doc. So I'm gonna go ahead and come up to the insert menu. Please follow along with me if you can. Feel free to pause at any moment if you need to catch up. But down in the insert menu, there's an option for charts. Unfortunately, the options within Google Docs are not a lot. I, I'm kind of given the basic charts here. I'm gonna choose the line chart, which is similar to a scatter plot, but not exactly what I want. When I do that, two things happen. First, it inserts in my Google Doc a placeholder chart, and you'll see here that it doesn't have the correct information in it. A second thing that it does without really telling you is that it puts a Google spreadsheet document in your Google Drive and links it to this chart. We'll get to that in a moment. First, what we need is we need to go up and we need to get our data. So I'm gonna come up here to our shared classroom data. I'm gonna open up our shared classroom data and I'm gonna make sure that I go to the correct hour. So I'm just gonna to go to hour one. That was the hour that I was in, but you might have a different hour you need to go to. Now I'm gonna go ahead and select all the data that I need. In this, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the B column I'm just going to click on B at the top, hold shift, and click the C column. These are the only two columns I need. I don't need column A, the table numbers. That's not really relevant here. But I do want the mass column and the volume column. That's my independent and my dependent variable. So I'm going to go ahead and push, push control C to copy this data. And you'll see a little line goes around the entire data for, the, for the, all the columns. Now I don't need this chart anymore. That, that data has been saved into the, into my notepad or into my clipboard of the computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this data. Now I'm gonna go down to my chart. This is the placeholder chart within my Google Docs. When I click on it, there's an option in the upper right-hand corner that appears that says linked chart options. If you click on that and choose open source, it's gonna open that Google spreadsheet that it created in your Google Doc. This is a great opportunity right now before we do anything in this chart to move the chart to your science folder. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the move button and I'm going to choose my science folder and make sure that I move it there to keep things organized. All right, this is the chart, the placeholder chart that it is. And if you, I need to scroll up a little bit, but this is the data that it is linked to. Well, I don't need this data. So the first thing I'm going to do is just click on these cells and just push the escape button or delete it. And notice now it says no data. Well, I want to paste my data from my class spreadsheet in here. So I'm going to choose columns A and B. Again, clicking column A, holding shift and clicking column B. And then I'm going to paste my data in there. So control V is paste. So there is my class data, which is looking pretty good, only it's not exactly the way I want it to be. So notice we chose a line chart. This is why it looks a little weird. Line charts are really meant for data over time, and ours is more of a scatter plot of information. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this dot, dot, dot in the upper right-hand corner, the hamburger button, and choose Edit Chart. When I do that, a a chart editor should appear in the Sheets program. This allows me to change my information. For example, if I need, if I messed up on my data range right here, I can change the range of my data. But I'm just choosing everything in the spreadsheet from columns A all the way to columns E. That's fine. It's looking pretty good. So you should have similar points as me. But I'm going to change my chart type. I don't want a line chart. In fact, what I want is a scatter plot. Now, over here, it does give me a suggested scatter plot, which is awesome. You can click on that, and it will give you most of the information. If it doesn't give you the suggested scatter plot, then you can always scroll down and click here. There's a scatter chart. I'm going to choose this option. It's the longer option, but it gives me a little bit. It allows me to go through some of the information you might not know how to do. So I'm going to choose scatter chart. Now my data is looking pretty good, only I need to fix a few points. I need to fix the title, and I also notice that my axes don't have any labels. We don't know what those numbers represent. So I'm going to go ahead and edit those. To do that, I'm going to change in my chart editor over to the Customize tab. And the first thing I'm going to do is come down to the Chart and Axes title section so I can change that information. So my chart title is not correct. It's still in the placeholder text. It says Point Scored. We didn't score any points. What we did do was we, we looked at the mass, 
versus the volume of Play-Doh. So I'm going to go ahead and change the title to reflect that so people know what my chart is about and it helps remind me what my chart is about. Now to change my axes labels, all I need to do is click on this drop down menu and I'm going to go to my different axes. Let's start with the horizontal axes. That's the bottom one down here. That represents my mass in grams. So I'm going to put G in parentheses there. All right, this is looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and change the vertical axes to volume in milliliters. All right, this graph is looking super awesome and we're really starting to think, see things here. We can even see a trend of our data. In fact, speaking of the trend, let's help our people who are looking at this as well as ourselves see the trend line. I'm gonna go ahead in my customization chat tabs, change it to the series. In the series tab, I'm gonna scroll down here and click on this trend line button. All right, that's looking so perfect. This is giving me a nice trend line. In fact, this data is, is editable. I can come in here and click on some of these pieces and it will tell me what my lines are. This allows me to find, if I wanna find the slope or other things I can, I can highlight over this data and it's actually interactive. I can also use this customization tab, by the way. I can use it to find certain pieces of data. For example, if I wanted to find the slope intercept of this line, I can come out down here underneath where I added the trend line and click use equation, and it will give me the slope intercept form. So this is really cool. All right, I'm almost done. I don't need to be here anymore. My data is looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the spreadsheet program and that will bring me back to my Google Doc. You might notice that my, my spreadsheet or my chart hasn't updated. So I need to go ahead up here, an update button should appear. And when I click on that, it will make my data look really good. And this is the data to answer my analysis questions here. Remember, you can always go back and open the source of the data if you wanna manipulate it even further or be able to see any of the pieces. It's interactive at that point. All right, good luck.